Hello, you're watching Afternoon Live. I'm Rachel Schofield. Today at 2. Hello everyone, you're watching Afternoon Live with me, Rachel Schofield. As you know, we are waiting for the Prime Minister. She's due to make a statement shortly about the progress of Brexit negotiations following that negative reception from other EU leaders to her plans for leaving the European Union. While we're waiting, we're just... You're watching BBC News, our latest headlines. OK, let's get more now on the latest developments around Brexit. In the past half an hour, in an unusual and uncompromising live televised address from Downing Street, Theresa May directly challenged EU leaders over their proposals for Britain's relationship with Brussels once the UK leaves the EU. The Prime Minister said the UK could not make further progress in talks until the EU offered what she described as serious engagement on two negotiating issues, a future economic relationship and the question of the Irish border. So, as you can see, a fairly steely performance there from the Prime Minister, talking, as you would imagine, about uh, the sticking points in the negotiations, one of the key ones, uh, the, the uh, Northern Irish question one might describe it as in this instance. And uh, we've just been getting a response from Nigel Dodds, uh, Deputy Leader of the DUP. Let's hear what he's been saying. OK, let's return to politics and Brexit, and in this case UKIP, because UKIP's leader, Gerard Batten, has told his party's autumn conference that Britain should be dictating to the EU how it would leave the European Union rather than asking for a deal. He was speaking... Hello, you're watching Afternoon Live with me, Rachel Schofield, today at 3. Also coming up on Afternoon Live, all the sport with Ollie. Look forward to that. We'll join you for a full update just after half past. And Louise Lear has all the weather. Thanks, Rachel. Quite an autumnal flavour to our weather this weekend. Feeling cool for many and there's more wet and windy weather to come. I'll give you all the details shortly. Thanks, Louise. Also coming up for you. Hello everyone, you're watching Afternoon Live. I'm Rachel Schofield. In the past hour, the Prime Minister has delivered an ultimatum to the EU, demanding its leaders engage seriously over the two deadlocked issues of trade and the Irish border, and that they put forward fresh counter-proposals. In a highly unusual television address from Downing Street, Theresa May said the two sides had reached an impasse, with the EU making a mockery of the referendum result, striking a defiant tone she said she would prefer no deal to anything which failed to respect the referendum or divided the United Kingdom. So, where does the UK's relationship with the EU now stand? Well, we can get some perspective on this. We can speak to Radek Sikorski, who was Foreign Minister of Poland when Donald Tusk, now President, of course, of the EU Council, was Prime Minister. Thank you for taking time to speak to us here on BBC News. Pleasure. Well, let's stay with this, because in the past hour, Nigel Dodds has told BBC News that it is important Theresa May shows she will not be bullied by Brussels. Nigel Dodds, their deputy leader of the DUP. Well, let's turn to other news now. Two major drugs companies have failed in their legal bid to prevent NHS doctors prescribing a cheaper treatment for a debilitating eye condition. The drug Avastin is just as effective as the two existing treatments for wet age-related macular degeneration and the decision could save the NHS as much as £500 million a year. Our health correspondent Dominic Hughes has been assessing today's ruling. Dominic Hughes there. Well, uh, let's get more on this. We can take you live to Glasgow where we can speak to Mike Burden, who's president at the Royal College of Ophthalmologists, and he was part of the decision-making process which enabled doctors to prescribe Avastin. Thanks for being with us. Talk us through the kind of uh, considerations you had to give to this decision. Well, let's get more now on the latest developments around Brexit. In a defiant televised address from Downing Street, Theresa May has directly challenged EU leaders over their proposals for Britain's relationship with Brussels once the UK leaves the EU. The Prime Minister said the UK could not make further progress in talks until the EU offered what she described as serious engagement on two negotiating issues where there's deadline, namely trade and the Irish border. Sir Keir Starmer talking to me a little while ago. Well, as you can imagine, plenty of reaction coming out following that uh, televised statement by the Prime Minister. Just to give you a flavour of some of the other political parties and what they have been saying, um, a reaction from Sinn Féin, their Brexit spokesman, David Cullinane, saying, 
Theresa May was given a hard dose of reality at Salzburg. Chequers is a dead duck. It is not workable. Everybody knows it, he says, including, I suspect, Theresa May herself. He says she's put too much political capital into it to let go and move to a viable alternative. But crucially, as you would expect, it says regardless of the merits of Chequers or not, one thing is certain. According to Sinn Féin, there can be no withdrawal agreement without a backstop for the North. So uh, echoing the whole importance of uh, Northern Ireland and the border question, Sinn Féin there. Uh, reaction also coming in from Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. A dreadful statement she refers to made by the Prime Minister. Another reference to Chequers as a dead duck. She says uh, she's blamed the EU for a no deal and she's doing huge damage to all those she's supposed to serve. Their solution, they say, is the only remotely workable way to do Brexit is to stay in the single market and the customs union. If the Prime Minister is not prepared to do that, Brexit should not happen. That's according to uh, uh, the uh, SNP. And then uh, finally, you will recall in that speech that Theresa May gave, she was very critical of EU leaders and said they had rejected the UK's proposals without any detail or reasons. That has been strongly refuted uh, in a comment from an EU official to the BBC, this official saying Michel Barnier provided complete clarity throughout the negotiation process as to why they would reject the key part of the Chequers plan. This is not an outcome that has come, as this official says, out of the blue. Uh, they're not surprised, though, that Theresa May said what she did because of, quote, the hard time she received in the British press this morning and a suggestion that perhaps she needed an excuse to be seen to come out fighting. So uh, uh, strong reaction there and uh, a rebuttal essentially of the Prime Minister's uh, claim that really this uh, was unfair of the EU to uh, not give any detail. They're saying there's been plenty of detail and plenty of warning that her Chequers proposal was unacceptable to them. We'll have plenty more to come on all of that, but now a change of tone and tack because thousands of artefacts salvaged from the wreck of the Titanic are to be auctioned. British museums are raising money to help keep them in public hands. More than 5,000 artefacts are due to go under the hammer after the company that owns them went bankrupt. But there's also huge interest in the items, as you might imagine, from hedge funds in the US. <laughs> Hello everyone, you're watching Afternoon Live with me, Rachel Schofield. The Prime Minister has given a defiant response to EU leaders who rejected her Brexit proposals, calling on them to treat Britain with respect and to engage seriously with the negotiations. In a live televised address from Downing Street, Theresa May demanded that European leaders needed to offer counter-proposals on two deadlocked issues, namely trade and the Irish border. She said the EU was making what she called a fundamental mistake if it believed she would agree to anything which undermined the referendum or divided Northern Ireland from the rest of the United Kingdom.